believe that. And that's what we're going to talk about again this morning. I'm probably going to be on prayer for a while while I'm preaching. I'm not saying we're going to get somebody in here in between and I'll pick it back up. But I'm telling you, I thought I was going to preach the first verse last week. And I got to one word and I thought I was going to get to two words this week. Uh, I thought I'd get into Hollywood be thy name. But, uh, but we're not even going to get into that this morning. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to go ahead and read verses 9 through 13. The disciples at one time, they asked the Lord, Lord. Teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. And another spot, the Lord says, after this manner, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Last week we preached our father. This morning we preach which art in heaven, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, hallowed be your name, O oh Lord God. You alone are worthy, Lord. You alone are sanctified and separated. Oh, there is no other God. There is no other name above your name, O oh Lord God. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We come into your house this morning to proclaim the name of Jesus. We come into your house this morning, O oh Lord God, to, to st stand in agreement with you according to your word, O oh Lord God. And we pray that your word would go forth. Lord, I pray that you make us intercessors, Lord. I pray that you make us people of prayer. I pray that you cause us to believe that whenever we allow you to use our vessels, oh Lord God, and that we pray in agreement with you. Oh, when we pray according to your will, Lord, that something shifts in the spiritual realm, oh Lord God. Teach us to believe that, that your will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where there is peace, where there is holiness, where there is righteousness, oh Lord God. Let heaven enter our spiritual realm, oh Lord God, and use us for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallelujah. I want you to know something. He's exalted, but he's not far away. That's a simple thought this morning. Our Father is in heaven. Two subtopics. He's exalted, but he's not far away. Psalm 57 says this. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let the glory be above all the earth. Amen. He resides in the heavenly realm. I want you to know that he's holy. He's powerful. He's all-knowing. Hallelujah. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He is omnipresent. It means he's everywhere. He's at the prison. He's in this place. He lives in you. And everywhere that you bring him, hallelujah, he is ready to be released into that area that you bring him, just like the Old Testament tabernacle. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. If you're a believer this morning, amen? You know, sometimes when we view life from earth, we become discouraged. Our situations seem, seem bigger than God sometimes. But prayer helps me to see through the eyes of God. Prayer reminds me that my God is bigger than my situations and circumstances. Sometimes the bills get bigger, the checks seem smaller, the kids are acting crazy, the body feels sick, the husband or wife is mean, and these earthly trials begin to take a toll on the human heart. Y'all know what I'm talking about this morning? Am I the only one in here that's ever felt the weights and the burdens of life try to climb up on my back and try to weigh me down and try to burden me and try to hold me down? The heart becomes weighted down. The cares of the world begin to wrap around and choke the hope of God's word. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I just declared the word of God to you. Yes. I just spoke to you the truth yes. of God's word. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. God, the word of God tells me that God paves his streets in gold. God has no lack. 
God has everything that we need. He's a storehouse. Amen. And when he's ready to release it, he can release it. Praise God. I just declare truth and hope. Faith. The word of faith. It should have sounded right. If, if the spirit of God lives on the inside of you, it should have sounded right. It should have felt right. I hope that it would rattle through your weary bones if they're weary. But it's got to become your word. Yes. You understand? I can believe it. I can read it. You can read it. Praise God. We can go through. How many times have we just opened up the word and we read our chapter? Amen. And we, okay, I'm done. And we moved on. But listen, the word, his word has to become our word. You, you understand what I'm getting at? Yeah. It has to become real to me. It has to, it has to become real for me. It has to become me. Amen. And, and I want you to know that prayer will do that for you. Prayer will make God's word your word for your life. We say to ourselves, we're okay. You know what I'm talking about when the weights of life get on us? We say we're okay, but the weight of the world makes us, if we're not careful, we will become almost mechanical. Yes. Almost like a robot. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not yeah. talking to, y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There's been times in my life when people are like, and listen, you probably throw it at me next week, and that's okay, you can throw it. People have told me in the past, I don't understand how you get all this done. I used to think to myself, man, I feel like a train. If we don't keep throwing coal in this bad boy, it's going to be hard to get this thing started again. Okay. But let me tell you something. We're not mechanical. We're not robotic. And sometimes what will happen is, is that we're just like kind of like, chicka, 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 chicka. Just got to keep it going. Just got to keep it going. But listen, the Lord, I'm not saying you can't get nothing through that, but hold on a second. Now we got to let this vessel be filled with the Holy Spirit. If there's going to be some coal thrown in the fire, let it be the coal of the fiery coals of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit have his way and let things, let us learn to allow things to be done in the spirit. Amen. And not just become robotic because the cares of the world and I just have to go through the motions. Listen, sometimes even though you feel burdened, you can still get stuff accomplished for the Holy Spirit. But prayer and spending time in prayer will help you to be more sensitive to the Spirit of God and help you to be able to discern the difference between you trying to do something in your own strength versus allowing the Holy Spirit to do it in you. Okay, here's an example. Recently, I was talking to somebody and they were like, you know, when something happens to me and then all of a sudden, like I felt really irritated when that happened. And I, and I said, I think it was yesterday, maybe in a call. Yeah, I think it was, it was in the call coming back. And, and I was like, you know, as the people of God, we got to start recognizing this because I'm going to tell you something. I'm not trying to tell you you got to deem it in you when this happens. That's not what I'm saying. Come on. I'm trying to make a point. You think that the devil's... Yeah, first of all, if you walked into this church and you don't believe in the spirit realm, then you probably came into the wrong church this morning. Because I want you to know the apostle Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, world rulers, yes. spiritual yes. wickedness in yes. heavenly places. The devil doesn't want you free. The devil doesn't want you being used for the kingdom of God. So he's going to fight you. and He's going to try to attack you. and He's going to try to frustrate you. He doesn't want you to be able to enter in to your destiny, right? So whenever something starts to happen and then all of a sudden you go, you, you feel irritated. You feel irritated and frustrated. Yes. And, 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 and it's like the next thing you know, you're like, you're kind of like spewing things out of you that then later on, you're like, man, but, but see, sometimes we don't even really recognize that. Right, doing right. that. And we just walk around like that. Yes, we sir. just walk around like spewing that stuff out like a mosquito sprayer going in the neighborhood. <laughs> spraying that stuff out all over. The, all that negativity, all that frustration, all that irritation. Just going to throw it out of myself. Throw it all over it. Get it on you, preacher. Get it on you over here. Let me throw some of this and see what sticks. You don't even realize it, but, but the enemy is using you. Come on. If you start spending some time in the presence of the Lord, in his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all been there before. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? If you haven't been there, I, I invite you. And I, I want to give you an invitation where I can't really give it to you, but I can tell you about it. When he invites you, go. Because, see, the more time you spend in his presence, the more you start to get sensitive to the spirit of the Lord, the more quickly you start to catch on to the symptomatology. It's a fancy little medical word. The symptoms. Whenever something else is affected, <clears throat> to where you start to realize that was not the Lord. <laughs> that was something else that just caused me to act like a fool right yeah. there. 
That was something else, right? And so, but 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 that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's something that prayer can do for you. That you become used to. Because see, I, I know because there's been times in my own life where I wasn't spending as much time in the presence of the Lord. And I acted like that and didn't think it was that big of a deal. But I'm telling you right now, that causes division. That causes trouble. That causes something contrary to the will of God in the kingdom of God. Whenever you're a man or a woman of God. Yeah, I'm just going to hear I'm just here to tell you the truth. Yeah. Amen. You know, we, so, so look, prayer will reconnect us to the heart of God. Prayer will make our faith larger than the devil's lies. Prayer provides an opportunity for intimacy. Praise God. Yes. We speak to him. He speaks to us. He encourages our spirit to believe him for what is impossible in the natural. He's exalted. He's in the heavenly places. He's on the throne of God. But he has made a way that you and I can access him and talk to him and talk to his home. He is sovereign. He is in control. He scattered the stars in the sky. He, he took the lump of clay and, and he breathed life into it and he called him Adam. Hallelujah. I believe that. And that's the God I serve. And he made a way for me to be able to connect. He encourages our spirit to believe in for what is impossible in the natural. Prayer increases faith. Mm -hmm. Satan's power and ability to affect our lives entered our earthly realm when he deceived Adam and Eve. And this is what he did. He deceived them into listening to him and disobeying God. And can I tell you, that's his plan for you also. That's his plan for me also. His plan is for us it, 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 to disobey God's word. And to, and to submit to his will. I'm talking about the devil. The devil wants you and I to submit to his will. And if he can't get us to obey God right now, then you know what he'll do? He'll start working on others around us. His strategies influence people around us. Through them, he inserts chaos and confusion into our lives. He releases lies of hopelessness and despair into our atmosphere. He draws our focus on the problems. But when I read God's truth, I learn something. I learned something when I read the Bible one day. I learned Satan is cast down. See, God is on the throne. God is in the heavenly realm. Satan is not in the throne room of God. Satan might be in the second heaven. He might be roaming around upon the earth seeking whom he may devour. But he has no authority. Not over me. Hallelujah. He doesn't have authority over you if you're in Christ. If the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. I'm here to tell you what the word of God says this morning. What we lost in Adam, we regained in Christ. We've regained power, dominion, authority. The, Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. The Lord has given us power over evil. The Lord has given us power to walk in the goodness of God and to walk with the Lord and allow him to transform our lives. Amen. The Lord wants to bring life and more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. He said, I, he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. And when I pray, it stimulates my faith to believe what I read. No, you're a liar, Satan. You're cast down. I take authority over you, liar. I'm not going to believe your lies. Oh, but pastor, da, 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 this is still going on. No, you're a liar, Satan. See, this is one thing he can't trick me on. I've been through some tragedy. Jesus said in this world, you will have tribulation. Right. People die. There's heartache. There's pain. There's frustration, there's irritation, but he can't steal this from me. He can't steal my access to the throne room of God. He can't steal me grabbing a hold Amen. of the horn of his altar. Amen. He can't steal the hope of glory from me if I'll trust oh, God and trust his word. And if I'll connect myself to him, there might still be some bad. But, I'm, but he's a liar. He doesn't have power. And I'm going to keep on believing God and trusting God and going to the Lord and believing God to do what he... Well, because, can I tell you something? There's a whole lot of things that I would love, that I desire, that I pray for. And, and usually it's not really for me personally. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's because this is what I want. More, and I've told people this for, since we started this church. Have I, do I know that for sure that I would have always heard these words? I can't promise you. But my desire in my heart since the Lord has gotten a hold of me is that I will hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. 
I want to hear those words, and I want you to hear those words. I'm telling you, God has done something in me over the last year. I've always wanted you to hear those words. I've always wanted to be. That's why I witness outside the walls of this church. That's why I try to tell anybody I can anytime a door opens up to tell them the good news about Jesus Christ. No matter where I am, no matter how tired I am, I want to let somebody else know about the goodness of God. Amen. And, and, and I've always wanted people to hear those words. But I'm telling you right now, over the last year, it's in me so strongly. I want you, as the body of Christ, to be able to hear those words. Amen. Well done, my good and faithful servant. What the Lord has put in your heart based upon the word of God, that you would do it. That you would go forth and that you would do it. Amen. And that we would get to the place where we would not be so confused about not knowing what God's word says. That we would not accomplish God's will for our lives while we're on this earth. Because once we're on the other side, that's it. Like I've told y'all recently, the talk is over. <laughs> once we're on the other side, that's it. The Lord been trying to talk. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be made white like wool. Though they be red like cr cr crimson, right? They can be made white like white as snow. Yes. But, but he been trying to reason. He been trying to talk. And so when I pray, it stimulates my faith. You know, I want you to know this, too, that the broken law actually gives Satan legal right. The law gives strength to sin. That's what it says. Let me take a little bit of time with this, okay? I mean, it's kind of a teaching thing here. The law, there was a time frame before there was a law. The law came whenever God created the nation of Israel, and through Moses, he gave the law to mankind. According to the law, once God declared what the law was, man now was responsible to understand that this was God's will. It doesn't matter. You're not going to, just as you cannot plead ignorance of the law, whenever, oh, but I didn't know that it was a 60 officer. I was driving 85, but I didn't know it was a 60 because I didn't see the sign because the sign, there was a little limb over the, you're not going to plead ignorance of the law. You can try to. And I can really go to preaching on that because there's a lot of times in our own life that we blame everybody else for everything that's happening. Yes. But that ain't, that's not going to work. <laughs> that's not going to work. When we stand before the Lord, we're not going to be able to plead ignorance of the law. It's God's earth. Now, hold on a second. God created this earth. He spoke and it was. Amen. God did not. The word of the eternal word of God spoke. The spirit hovered over the face of the deep and God created. Amen. This earth belongs to him. He formed Adam and he placed him here. Amen. And this is his earth. And he declared the law. And so human beings that have not received Christ will be judged according to the law. All right. Now we got that part. Now you've received Christ. If you've received Christ, you don't have to worry about being judged by the law. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have not put faith in his sacrifice for your sin, then you are going to be judged according to the law. But if you put your faith in Christ and what he did for you at the cross, his blood has atoned you. His blood has saved you. You're no longer guilty according to the law. Hallelujah. You're free in Christ. Yes. Now, but, but I got it. And so the law actually give strength to sin in more than one way. The, the law gives strength to sin in two ways, for sure. Number one, it gives strength to sin when you break it. Even after Jesus. I'm about to get back to that. But it also gives strength to sin when you try to live according to it after you've known Christ. Because see, when you try to live according to a set of rules and regulations... <clears throat> You frustrate the grace of God. You're not putting your faith in what God provided, which was his son to die on the cross. And you're now trying to go through the motions and you're trying to make yourself holy and righteous in the eyes of God through your own actions and your own works by reading enough Bible, by going to church enough, by, by doing all this stuff. And none of that makes you righteous. Jesus is the righteous one. That's what Romans chapter 3 verse 21 says. Now the righteousness of God apart from the law has been revealed. He has a name. His name is Jesus. So that's number one. When you put your faith in Christ, you're now you're no longer under the dominion of the law. Sin shall not have power over you because you're no longer under law. Instead, you're under grace. Amen. But even after Christ, you can't just go around breaking the law, my friend. <laughs> you can't go around breaking the law. And now what you're talking about, preacher, I'm talking about the law of God. I'm talking about this book right here. <laughs> To him that knows to do right and he doesn't do it, to him it is sin. Yes. 
I didn't write that. James, the Lord's half-brother, wrote that. The Holy Spirit through James wrote that. Yes. Amen. And if you and I, we may not like that kind of preaching, I don't know, but if you and I think that we are going to walk, well, here we are in Christ, hallelujah. Here we are, we understand the definition of justification by faith, praise the Lord. We understand that justification by faith means that Jesus' blood has paid the penalty for my sin. Now when the Father looks at me, he no longer sees me as guilty. And in the courts of heaven, God himself has declared me innocent. That's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. It is faith that makes you righteous. Faith in what? Not in what you do, but what Jesus did. But you can't, and you and I understanding justification by faith, you and I understanding the message of the cross, cannot walk around breaking the law of God, breaking the word of God, and think that we are not going to bring repercussions upon ourselves. See, the law gives strength to sin. You and I go around breaking, and listen, well, how do you fix it? You bring it back under the blood. But how many times do we think, I'm just, I'm, this is good stuff right here. I mean, I'm not saying I'm saying it's good, but I'm saying it's good. Because it's the word. <clears throat> How many times do you and I, understanding who we are in Christ, some of you may not understand exactly what I'm saying. If you hang around long enough, you'll, you'll, you're going to cure it. Okay? But, but speaking to those of us that understand what it means to be in Christ. Speaking to those of us who understand what, what, when we say the message of the cross for sanctification, what we mean. How many of us have even since then still broken the law of God and the word of God? Okay, that's one thing. Because you see, the Word of God says this. You have an advocate with the Father. If you fall short of the glory of God, you have an advocate with the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ. And then if you go to Him and you repent, and you, and you repent of your sins, He's faithful. Yes. He is faithful and He will forgive you of your sins. Yes. But, but, but again, what does it mean to repent? <laughs> Does it mean, oh, Lord, I'm sorry? No. I, I used to make fun. It's been a long time, right? I used to, some of y'all been around here long enough. Y'all remember that old Britney Spears song, Oops, I Did It Again? It's not like a little Swiffer. Little running around cleaning with a Swiffer. Oops, I did it again. And then tomorrow it's like, oops, I did it again. And then, oops, I did it again. It's okay, I'm justified. No. No. That's not how the kingdom of God works. The word repentance means to change the mind. And when you change your mind from what you thought was right and you came into union with God and according to his word, now it's like, uh-oh, I got something that I got to do. I got to get right with the Lord. Because the courts of heaven are saying that, listen, there's been an offense against God. There's been an offense against God's word. You need to get your heart right. You need to lower yourself under the mighty hand of God. You need to humble yourself, Christian, pastor. Lower yourself. I, I, you don't need to come lower yourself to me. That's between you and the Lord. You don't treat me right in the spirit. He's going to get you. Just like if I don't treat you right in the spirit, he's going to get me. I promise you, you will not get away with treating your brothers and sisters improperly in the house of God. You will not get away with treating the pastor improperly in the house of God. I will not get away with doing it to you. You will not get away with doing it to me. And if the spirit of division wants to come in here and use you to bring, wreak havoc in the house of God, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. The spirit of unity is wanting to bring together a unified body so that he can do work on this earth. And that lying devil over here just stirring us up, getting us all irritated, all frustrated. No, he is a liar and the father of lies. Listen to me. You, you got you to gotta plead in the courts of heaven. You got to plead. What you going to plead, preacher? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I plead the blood. I plead the blood, Lord. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I failed you. I want my heart to be broken before you. Listen, repentance in the Old Testament. They weep with sackcloth and ashes. They strip their bodies naked. They put sackcloth on like a little burlap sack. They took ashes. They rubbed it all over their head. They made themselves feel bad. I'm not trying to talk to you about legalism this morning. 
I'm trying to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. And when you truly repent, he will provoke your heart to sorrow toward the failure that you've shown before your God. The Holy One of Israel that sent His only begotten Son to die naked on a cross for our sin. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. I'm telling you the truth yes. of the Word of God. The enemy doesn't want you to grab a hold of that, my friend. The enemy wants you to let that offense just lay up in there. Then your heavens become a brass. And you're over there trying to pray. And it's hitting the ceiling. And you don't even realize it. And you wonder why. Well, why you answer this, this, and this? And, and sometimes the Lord allows those things to delay for a moment yeah, yeah. because he's trying to work stuff out in you. That's right. He's trying to work stuff out in me. Praise God. He's working stuff out in us. Let us learn how to have patience with one another. Praise God. So that was the law. And the law gives strength to sin. And you can't go around breaking the law. You can't go around breaking the word of God. I don't care if you're in Christ or not. Well, I do care if you're in Christ. You need to be in Christ. But what I'm saying is just because you're in Christ, you can't be breaking the word of God and acting like it's not a big deal. Yeah. Running around singing your oops, I did it again song. And let me say this too. See, what the, what the Lord did with the law, Colossians 2, he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That's talking about the law. He, he, Jesus removes the law that was contrary to us. So every single time before Jesus, or whenever people live under the law, every time you make a failure, or I don't know that it's every time, I don't know how often Satan goes before the Lord. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit tonight. I don't know how often Satan goes before the Lord, but I know because I read the Bible that he goes before the Lord. And he's the accuser. And he brings himself before the Lord and he says, look at this one. I have like a little binder here. <laughs> I got some offenses. We need to talk about this. Because they call you their child. They call you their child. And look at this. Because see, you can put the Lord right under the blood, preacher. No, no, it's not. Not if you have not repented of it. Not if you have not truly loved. Oh, but I'm walking in Christ. And God's not okay with us carrying these things around and repeatedly acting this same way day after day, time after time, continuing to do the same thing and acting like it's under the blood. No, he's not. That's not what his word says. Amen. And so the enemy goes up there and he's accusing you. He's accusing you before your God. He's like, no, look at this. Look at this one right here. Look what, she, look what she said. Look what he said. Boom, 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 boom. And he's accusing us before our God. The good news is, is that we have a perfect plea. We have a perfect plea of the blood of Jesus. We just have to take the work that Jesus did for us, and we just have to bring We just got to do business with the Lord. Amen. We just got to get intimate in that prayer time with the Lord. See, that's one of the first things we ought to be doing, too, is getting our heart right with God through repentance. And then it starts to free things up in the spiritual realm. The Lord begins to move in the midst of our prayers. Amen. We begin to connect intimately with God when our hearts are right with the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you some truth right here. And he says this, though. He says, he took the law that was against us and he took it out of the way. And what did he do? He nailed it to his cross. Then it says this, and he spoiled principalities and powers. And it says he triumphed over them. Let me just tell you real quick. Principalities and powers, many of you know this. It's talking about fallen angels and demonic spirits. It says he triumphed over them in it. It's talking about the cross. Basically what the word of God is saying is, is that Jesus has already defeated yes. the works of darkness. Yes. Jesus has already defeated the works of darkness. And Jesus said, the power that was given unto me, I've given unto you. I've given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions. I've given you power to, to have dominion upon the earth. I've given you power to do my work upon the earth. You and I just got to make sure we keep our heart right before the Lord. And if we'll keep our heart right before the Lord and we'll plead a just cause, I plead the blood of Jesus. Because you're not going to just sit there and plead, but look what I did, Lord. You know what I mean? Look what I did. Look at all the stuff I did, Lord. I was a pastor of a church for eight years and I didn't even take a, you know, whatever. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. that none of that's going to work. Especially if my attitude was wrong. Right? Anyway, Jesus defeated the enemy. Right? He defeated them and he gave us authority. 
Hallelujah. He gave us authority on earth. Bill, can I get you to stand up, Jace? Can I get you to stand up, Brittany? Can I get you to come over there to the end of that aisle right there, Brittany? You're pretty quick. You can do that pretty fast. Pray to God. He's given, he's put his glory in this vessel right here. He's given you authority and dominion. He's given you authority and dominion. You're born again, Jace. I know you are. He's given you authority and dominion. He's given this one over here authority and dominion. Praise God. He's giving us over here authority and dominion. I don't know about these people across the hallway over here. Oh, man, it's bright. I don't know about the people that live in the house. I don't know their, their story with Jesus. Y'all can sit down. Thank you. I'm trying to make a point that everywhere a believer goes, that the Spirit of God has been placed yes. on them, yes. the authority and dominion, the triumph of God's kingdom, it's placed on the inside of you. <laughs> it's on the inside of you. It's on the earth, but it's in you. Because, see, Jesus said that he, the liar, is the prince of this world. So he's got power. He just doesn't have power over you. <laughs> he doesn't have power over you. So I need to tell you the truth of what God says about you. And then you take that to the prayer closet. And you get intimate and alone with the Lord. And then he makes it real to you. Hallelujah. You repent of your sin. You move that, that brass uh, covering off the top of you. And the Holy Spirit's going to start doing some mighty, mighty yes, things. Amen. And the more time we start spending in the presence of the Lord the more we're going to recognize the trickery of Satan. Yes, yes. Amen. We become sensitive. We become sensitive to the presence of the Lord and to the Spirit of God. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. When you walk in, man, look, when, as soon as Naya started her testimony, I'm telling you, I was like, oh my God. I felt the Spirit of God the whole time. I know them people don't know. Okay. I like getting weird for Jesus now. And the more I think you think I'm weird, the weird. And I don't want to do that in the flesh because that, right, right, that, right. that would be weird. Right. But I don't care what people think about me. I don't want to care. What people think about me. I'm, I'm done caring what people think about me. I want to carry the glory of Jesus. Amen. Anyway, when she first started her testimony, I heard that thing about her dad. I mean, I'm telling you, I felt like the anointing reverberated in that yard, like. <laughs> And I just like, the, I didn't know what nobody else was doing, but I could feel the tears, all oh, the anointing, the Spirit of God. Now, contrast that was whenever I said, you know, or like y'all, some of y'all that really know me, I didn't got on y'all's nerves before. Some of y'all that really know me, I've got y'all in the flesh, and I'm sorry. Okay, well, and some of you have got me in the flesh. <laughs> But contrast the feeling of the Spirit of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit versus the flesh. Mm -hmm. The irritability of the flesh. <clears throat> maybe I've had a guy in the flesh, maybe your husband, your ex-husband, <laughs> or somebody, right? Got you in the flesh. Somebody you work with, whatever. We have to start to recognize the difference between those two because the enemy is wanting to get us in the flesh. Yes. And you and I should not be operating in the flesh. See, that's a lie of the devil. He's trying to get us in trouble. The devil is trying to get us in trouble. I've told y'all the story. I'm not going to get into it. I almost lost the best job I ever had one time because the boss man said that, ain't, you know, I don't remember what I said. And I said, well, that ain't going to work for me, boss. After he had just told me I was the most productive guy in the house a week before, I'm like, well, what you're doing right now ain't going to work for me. And he's like, eh, okay. <laughs> what? Ah, flesh. You know, frustration, irritation. I can feel my face getting red. Ah! And I did almost open my mouth. And I could hear the Holy Spirit say, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Keep your mouth shut. Thank you, Lord. Even in the flesh, I was like, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, praise the two. You know what I'm getting at, though. The difference between the two. We need to start to... Be able to sense the difference. See, the Holy Spirit is never going to make you feel irritated like that. And the beauty is this, is that when you start to feel that way, you can bring that to the Lord, right? Okay, Lord, I see what he's doing. I see what you're doing, you lying devil. Listen, I'm just saying, you can pray in the Spirit if you're filled with the Spirit. You can pray in your natural language if you're not filled with the Spirit yet. And if I were you, I'd be calling out for the Lord to baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Because I'm a prayer language, my friend. 
I want, and listen, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, this is not you. You have not given me a spirit of fear. You have not given me a spirit of anxiety. You have not given me a spirit of this kind of going. No, no, no. You've given me a spirit of love, power, love, and of a sound mind. I receive your word right now, Lord. I'm not about to lose it right here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But, you know, if Satan can keep us burdened, we will be preoccupied with earthly cares and not engaging in the spiritual battle. Jesus said this, listen, he said, come unto me, you who are weary and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You will find rest for your weary souls. I wish there was something big that I could pick up, try to tote them on back. But I just, I don't know, I'm not going to do it. I was carrying this little seat inside the ground. so heavy. so burdened. I don't know what to do with myself. You know, when we were praying in here earlier, this is the first time I ever prayed like this, I quoted that scripture. And I said, Lord, I love, I never said this before. I said, Lord, I lower my neck to you. Yoke me with you. It was just something I could see in the spirit. I, I give you my neck, Lord. I give you my neck. Connect me to you. See, that's what a yoke is. It connects two beasts of burden together so they can plow the field. The one's always stronger, stronger one's always wiser than the other one. Come unto me, you are weary and heavy lady. Take my yoke upon you. I'll lower my neck to you, Lord. Give it to me, God. Take it. I give it to you. Instead of stiff necked and stubborn and rebellion. Can't have it, Lord. I'm not going to give you this area of my life. I'm going to leave this unrepented and in the courts of heaven. Which is act like it's not there because I'm justified. I still witnessed to somebody yesterday. Well, what you did? You witnessed to them, but it probably didn't even make it through. <clears throat> Not if you're in the flesh. I know God can still use it. I realize that. But we, I wish we could really see what's going on in the spirit realm. I wish we could. I know he gives us glimpses. I know there's a lot more in the word that we hadn't tapped into yet. I know there's stuff in there. I'm going to be talking about a little bit of it tonight. But I know that there's more stuff in there we just hadn't tapped into. It, but he's going to reveal it to us. I wish we could really see what's going on in the spirit realm. How the enemy so easily throws us off. But how God can do such great and mighty things through us whenever yes. we yield our vessels to him. Praise God. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to come to you, Lord. I'm going to lower my neck to you. I'm going to give it to you. And then the enemy comes in. That won't work. <laughs> That's what he's going to tell you. The enemy's going to go, you can't do that. You can't lower your neck and get yoked to him. That's not going to work. Silly man. Satan says it won't work, but in prayer I hear God's voice remind me of his word. Satan is a liar, the father of lies, and the Lord would say, if you will trust me, my child, I will get you through this trial. That's what prayer will do. The Holy Spirit will start speaking to you. Peter said, listen, this is the NASB version. King James says, cast all your cares on him. NASB says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That won't work. You need medicine for this problem. The rest of that verse says this. Be sober of spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your who? By the heathen? No. By your brethren who are in the world. So when you face these trials of life, when I face the trials of life, let us not think in our minds that we're the only ones going through it. What we need to understand as the people of God is that the enemy is attacking all of us. Yes. He's trying to cause division and disunity everywhere. Yep. The question is this. Will we become mature enough in the faith to start to recognize the plans of the Come on. Amen? Yep. Come on. Will the music ministry, I'm not yep. trying to pick on nobody, but will the music ministry... Gain great revelation within their smaller group. Ah, that's what the enemy's doing. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Now I see. Uh -huh. When this happens, then it makes me feel this way. When that happens, it makes him feel that way. The next thing you know, it's like, pop, 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 pop. He's just jumping all over about it. And then, Lord, help us. Because I'm telling you this stuff, what I'm about to tell you is, I believe it's spiritual. Yeah. Then I walk up in here. Uh-oh. Come on. Y'all ever notice that before? Y'all be in here worshiping the Lord. <laughs> y'all worshiping the Lord. Y'all feel the presence of God. And the next thing you know, 
Somebody comes in, I'm gonna lock myself in. Somebody comes in, and the whole atmosphere changes. Yeah, yeah. It's like the whole atmosphere changes. Yeah. It's like what yeah. just happened? Yeah. Right, right. Now it's not that God's not bigger than that. Right. God is bigger than that. Uh -huh. But I have felt it before. I hate to say it, I think I've been the one that brought it in sometimes. <laughs> You can throw it in my face next week. It's okay. I'm getting less worried about that too. <laughs> Hallelujah. The more time I spend in the presence of God, people still tell me stuff, but it doesn't seem to bother me. Right, right. And some of what they say is true. I'll take the truth, spit out the bones, and I'm going to grow up into a big boy. Yes. I'm going to grow up into a big boy in Christ. Quit, quit all that crying and belly ache. Holy Ghost, tell me what my daddy used to tell me. Quit your belly aching, boy. <laughs> right? Quit belly aching in the spirit. Grow up and be a man. When I became a man, I put away childish things. All right. That won't work. You need medicine for that. Satan does not have authority over our lives. He cannot defeat us, kill from us, kill us, uh, destroy us. No. Can't have his way with us. Jesus defeated him on the cross. And prayer will give us the strength to believe God's truth and reject the enemy's life. So he's exalted, but he's not far away. Psalm 46 says this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yes. Now, if you don't know this, Jacob was his name before God changed him to Israel. Israel was the people of God. In the psalm right there, he's using the name Jacob to describe the nation of Israel. He, he, he said, I, he, they, the psalmist is saying, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. <clears throat> you can run to the Lord. Yes. When you find yourself frustrated and irritated yeah, because yeah. people aren't appreciating you or whatever you're going through, whether it's at work, whether it's in the home, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in the church, wherever it is, and you find yourself, you can run to the refuge. Hallelujah. And, and listen, and, if, and you know what? Praise God. I'm so glad the Lord put that on my heart to tell you because now it's you. It's yours to do with it what you will. Yeah. The word has been released. The watchman spoke it. Now it's you. It's yours. And my prayer for you is that you would run to the refuge. Yes. That you would run to your strong tower. Yes. Amen. When you recognize what the enemy is doing and that you would go to the Lord. And that you would allow him to dispense grace into your life. And he'll change that atmosphere. I'm telling you, you'll become a warrior in the kingdom of God. Your gift will start to shine like never before. You will be like a diamond in the hand of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Or an arrow that finds its mark. Oh, that's what I'm praying. Whatever my gift is. If I got more than one, whatever they are, Lord, hone them, sharpen them, polish them. Make me an arrow with a flexed bow. Let it find its mark. Let it find its target, Lord. I pray that over you and declare that over you, whatever yes. your gift is. Yes. Whatever your gift is in the kingdom of God, let it find its target, Lord. Use these people for your glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I gotta get, I'm getting a new pulpit. I gotta keep this one clean. Nobody else's responsibility to clean this. This is Pastor Matt's problem right here. And that's true. He's with us. Though he's exalted, he's not far away. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Translated means God with us. The word of God says he's raised us up together. He's made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And whether you realize it or not, in the spiritual realm, you are in Christ. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And the word of God says you're in him. You are seated in Christ right now. Praise God. He's not far away. He's not far away from us. We're not far away from him. The word of God says that we are in him. He is in us. We are spiritually connected to God through the cross. I need you to know that. We are spiritually connected to God through the cross. But look, I got the word but right here. I got the word but right here. Wait for the rest of the story. We are spiritually connected to God through the cross. But intimacy is another level of relationship. Intimacy is another level of relationship and requires time spent in the presence of another. 
The cross opens the door to God's presence. And you know what prayer does? Prayer says, I'm walking in. The cross opens the door and prayer says, I'm walking in. I had an illustration this morning. Imagine you receive an invitation. Respond, see, vous plaît. You get an invitation to, to have a, a dinner, a sit-down dinner at a house. I don't know. 117 Golden Streets. Something like that. It's going to be a nice meal. Right? It's in a gated community. So they, they put the pin, the little, the little combo number on the outside so you could have access into the gate. See, the cross is the pin number that gets you in. Yes. Gets you into the vicinity. Now you're at least in the neighborhood. <laughs> Driving around the neighborhood. Look how beautiful this is. Hallelujah. These people living right. <laughs> right? So now you're in the neighborhood. But guess what? You still got to keep on certain. You got to go there. You got to find the house. You got to be willing to even punch in the number first. So those that have reject Christ are not even in the neighborhood. But now you're in the neighborhood. And if you feel like you're having a hard time getting finding your destination, you might want to quit. You might want to give up. You can't give up. You got you to continue to move because you're about to, get, you're about to be in the presence of these people that you're about to go to this point. So now you find the address. Now you go not on the door. And they let you in and you sit down at the table and you sup with them. See, it's the same thing whenever you get into intimacy with the Lord. The cross has given you access, but prayer says, I'm walking in. I'm walking in and I'm not about to go get intimate with the Lord. Jesus said that, that we're going to knock and he who, re, he, who, he who answers, me and my father will come in and we will sup with him. Yeah. Amen. God wants to have a relationship with you and I. He wants to be intimate with you and I. He wants to have a, that closeness of relationship to where we start to learn his presence and we understand that intimacy and understand his presence. Amen? I've noticed, again, the more time I spend in the heavenly presence, the less I'm bothered by earthly problems and it becomes harder for Satan to fluster my feathers with carnal cares. You know, we, we have to be careful that we don't allow earthly cares to distract us from what's important. God concerns himself with spiritual matters. And yes, the spiritual affects the physical. But the danger is that we become so consumed with earthly cares that we lose our focus on the spiritual. You know, one time I was going to another church. And I remember this old boy told me that. He said, Matt, I fear that you're getting so heavenly minded. You're not going to be any earthly good. I don't remember getting to He told me that. Yeah, you, you're getting so heavenly minded. I don't believe you're going to be a... I, you know, is it possible we could be so earthly minded that we know heavenly? <laughs> I think that's more likely. I think that's more likely that we're going to be more earthly minded. The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the things having to do with the... Yeah, you need to get up and you need to be at work on time. And you need to do the best job you can do. Come on, somebody. Help me out here. But, but I'm saying you can become so... Cons and, and really, and truly, if you spend time in the presence of the Lord and let him get your heart right, you'd be better at work. You will be more productive at work and you will have more effectiveness at work if you learn how to let the Holy Spirit have his way in your heart and in your life. Some people just got a spirit of excellence in them. Some people just got a good work ethic in them. They were born with that or their daddy drilled it in them. I don't know how they got it. But some people don't have that great of a work ethic. Can I tell you that I'm that guy? Can, no, no, you know me now, but you didn't know me back when I was a high school dropout. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know me when I was sitting on that air conditioner outside that convenience store waiting for a boy to come pick me up or whatever. You didn't know me after I first was in the oil field. I was like, oh, I, 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 hey boss, I think I'm going to hand you, man. I need to go. I need to go today. Dude, suck it up. <laughs> you did not pull your hamstring. You got a little twinge in your muscle, man. Come on. <laughs> Be a man. Go to work. <laughs> I'm not here to pick on nobody. I'm just trying to say that we've come up with so many excuses. I remember after, even after being an RN, going through four years of nursing school. Dude, that was some hard work. I mean, it's not as hard as some people's stuff, but it was hard. And now I'm an RN. And look, after about the fifth time the boss told me, she said, no, Matt, you're not going home first today. You're not going home first anymore because you're a man and you're a husband and you have a child. You're going to stay at work and you're going to earn your checks and so don't even ask me anymore. You're not the first one to go home. Anymore. Wow. She said that in front of everybody. <laughs> Praise God. 
But when the Lord got a hold of me, the Lord reminded me of all the things my daddy used to tell me. He reminded me of that. He reminded me of this. But when the Holy Spirit put it together, then he's like, okay, your work ethic is a reflection of my, of my work in you. Quit calling in. Get up and be responsible. Right? That wasn't even part of the message, but there you go. You've been bought with a price. Glorify God with your, in your body. You know, the scripture also says this, that the, that the body is the Lord's and the Lord is from the body. He bought you. He purchased you. He became one with you in the spirit, right? We know that. But he wants to use your body. He, he want, that's why you can't join your body to a harlot. But, but it's not just that. You can't join your body to any kind of harlot tree. You can't let your body, your flesh, get involved with sinful activity. You can't afford to do that. Oh, you're preaching perfect, sinless perfection. No, I'm not. I'm preaching to you. Christ died for you. You put your faith in that. It releases grace to you. He empowers you. And you live right. According to the word of God. And now you offer this vessel. As a temple. For the Holy Spirit. To work through. The body's the Lord's. The Lord is for the body. Know you not that you are the temple and the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? Je Jesus tells the Samaritan woman, an hour is coming. Now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. How will we worship him in spirit and in truth if we don't seek the truth in his scriptures and connect spirit to spirit through prayer? God's looking for people to connect with him in the spirit. God made a way where he wouldn't be far away from us. And prayer makes this truth a reality to our hearts. Amen. Prayer produces intimacy and intimacy with God results in a desire for consecration and separation from the world. You know that? You know how long many times Christians linger in worldliness? Y'all ever been there? I did that for 12 years. Or longer, maybe. But where we linger in worldliness. I, I used to be so con look, dude, I don't even know how much money I spent in dealers <laughs> back in the day. No, really, I mean something that starts off good, I mean I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Something that starts off good, like you are kind of like a little overweight, can't get around good, you start trying to be a little bit more fit, you end up at the gym, next thing you know, you're like over there walking by the gym, like flexing your arm, taking pictures in the mirror. <laughs> And if you're all that, you're going to lose some weight. Man, look, I got to ask for three weeks. Man, it's time to go buy this. Go to Denver and buy some clothes. You know? You, everything, if we're not careful, everything would just become worldly. Amen. Then we're on Facebook. I don't think I ever posted a picture like that on Facebook. But it's, thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but that's what I'm trying to say, though. We become, wor we become worldly. We focus on worldly things. Amen. Help us, Lord. Not to focus on worldly things. Amen? Amen. Se consecration and separation from the world. The further we stay away from the presence of God, the closer we remain to the world. The less desire we have to be consecrated and separated, the more we become deceived. That compromise and complacency are okay. Well, that's deception. That tells you, as a child of God, that compromise and complacency are okay. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to act like me. Praise God. We don't need a whole world match. That's for sure. You don't have to act like me. But I'm telling you right now, complacency in the kingdom of God is not okay. God wants our heart. He wants to start a fire on the inside of us. And he wants to use us however he's going to use us. Amen? Praise God. Singers, musicians, y'all can come forward. I think that I've kind of preached loud enough here. I do want to share this last thing as they're coming up. That the Apostle Paul made this statement uh, when he went to a place called Mars Hill. I want to just kind of read it to you. As a matter of fact, uh, Haley, I, I, if you could if you could put this um, up for me, I think I think that this is a, uh, yeah I think this is the NASB version, Acts chapter seventeen verses twenty two, start in verse twenty two. Uh, so we're talking about he's exalted, but he's not far away. And that, and that people on earth that don't know him 
they don't realize where that God's right there, right? So Paul stood in the midst of the Aarakagas. Men of Athens, this is what he said, this is what he said. Men of Athens, I observe that you are very religious in all respects. For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. And he made from one man, Adam, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. This is really the verse I wanted you to see. Verse 27. It says this. That they would seek God. God's plan is that humanity would seek him. And look what it says. If perhaps they might grope for him and find him. It's like they're feeling around. I, th I think I told y'all about this before. One time I was in Europe and I was in survival school. They told us something there. They said it's called aerodynamics. And you're walking in the, in the belly of a ship that's got caught on fire and there's no lights. And you got on your respirator. And it's like you got to put your, put your foot out in front of you. You're doing all this number here. You don't want to hit your nose on some piece of metal. It's like that's what's going on. The world is blind. And they're walking around. They're groping. And they're looking. They're looking for God. And, and Paul says this. If perhaps they might grow for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. God is right there. And he's right there for you. For you that have it in you, one whisper and you'll be able to feel his presence. I'm telling you. One whisper and you'll be able to feel his presence. But in addition to that, people that are in the world, they need to know that he's right there. And if we allow him to have his way in our heart and in our life, amen, then he will be able to use us to release that truth to them so that they would gain revelation and find out he was right there the whole time. The thing that they were looking for, the pearl of great price, he was right there the whole time. Amen? You might need prayer for something. Maybe you're in this house, you've never even given your heart to the Lord. I don't know everybody in here this morning. I want you to know I'd love to lead you into a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Maybe you're going through something in your family, Lord, in, in your marriage, and with your children. I just would love to partner in prayer with you. I just want you to know the altars are open. If you need prayer this morning, don't delay. We'll trust God together. We'll believe God to minister to your heart and to your life. Amen. At the very least, let's worship the Lord together just for a little bit longer. And then you're dismissed. Amen.